The Education Channel presents The Laws of Life. This essay competition emphasizes important character traits that students can use. And now, your mother and daughter hosts The Education Channel's Leanne Zinzer and Osceola Elementary 5th grader Cassidy Bloom. Thank you and welcome to the Hilton Naples, site of this year's Collier County Laws of Life Banquet. Students from all across our county have turned in essays. Four winners were selected from 16 finalists in four grade divisions. They really got to shine here at the Laws of Life Banquet. Now Cassidy, let's go inside where dinner has been served and enjoyed and where it's time to begin the festivities. The events coordinator, Wendy Hodgson, is at the podium. Let's do it. It's always a little hustle and bustle at the beginning every year. Welcome to the 19th annual Laws of Life Banquet. We celebrate the students in Collier County in both public and private schools through this character education program that has been a community effort for almost two decades. We're very proud to have you here in celebration of our youth. More than 4,000 students from across Collier County submitted Laws of Life essays. From these, four finalists in each of the four grade level categories were selected. First, let's hear from the Laws of Life award winners from the fourth and fifth grade level. Here are the finalists and the first place winner who will deliver a speech. A world without respect is a world without discipline. Respect is one of the most important life skills. My definition of respect is acting in a friendly way to show others you care not only about your feelings, but others' feelings. Respect is not teasing others. It's treating them with loyalty and courtesy. We couldn't live without respect. It makes the world a better place. Respect is important and necessary in all communities. I'm just a kid. So my community is school. In school, we respect each other by not breaking gym equipment, being quiet in the library and the halls, not calling out in class, and helping a friend study. It may not seem like a lot, but it's the least we can do. In our class, we learn through meetings and prayers. We listen more than we talk. God gave us two ears and one mouth. What would happen if you didn't respect yourself and others Respecting yourself is being the best person you can be, eating healthy and balanced meals, and not doing things that will harm you. Respecting others is thinking positive thoughts about them. It's helping others and having sympathy for them. It's having admiration and not putting them down. Sometimes respect is gained by challenges and accomplishments. John Glenn was a decorated military leader. He entered the U.S. space program and was the first person to orbit, to orbit the Earth. He gave of himself his time, and his family. He went on to become a senator and fought for space exploration, science, and education. John Glenn is respected by all Americans and showed respect for our country and our planet. Respect makes the world a better place. It can be strong and powerful and have a big impact on our world. Live to respect others and yourself. Much could be learned from those individuals who display respect. These are the people to admire who lead us in the future. Keep respecting yourself and others. It affects everyone's lives. Thank you. You're watching the Education Channel's Laws of Life TV special on Comcast Cable 99 or perhaps online at callyourschools.com. Next we have the winners in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade level and the first place speech. Webster's definition of respect is a feeling of admiring someone or something that is good, valuable, or important. The first example provided is, he has earned respect. I struggle with that, because society's definition of earned seems different from mine. Would you consider a special needs child worthy of your respect? Would a stroke patient with slurred speech qualify? Witnessing blatant disrespect has transformed my perspective. I respect others not because of who I am, or <laughs> because of who they are, but because of who I am. My Nana passed away in May. She had suffered for a decade from a massive stroke that had happened before I was old enough to really know her. She had been a highly respected businesswoman, a go-getter, an intelligent, witty, driven, and loving woman of God. But to me, she was a frail woman who didn't recognize us most of the time. As she lay ashen and dying in hospice, I saw the love and grief on the faces of her children by her side. 
I saw devotion and admiration from her oldest grandchildren who knew her before her stroke. I also saw irreverence and disrespect as some of the younger grandchildren laughed and joked just feet from her deathbed. They didn't know her. She'd done nothing to earn their respect. She couldn't dress or feed herself. She couldn't even speak near the end. But she deserved their respect and love, not because of the woman she used to be, but simply because she was our Nana. Henry Frederick Amiel said, there is no respect for others without humility in oneself, and I agree. When I see someone being disrespectful, it says a lot more about the bully to me than it does the victim. We teach people how to treat us, according to Dr. Phil, but what happens when they are unable to defend themselves? My friend Benjamin is such a person. His sister has been my best friend since kindergarten, so he's like a brother to me. Benjamin is a special needs child, but to me, he's just special. When people don't take the time to get to know him, they miss out on the tangible joy he brings when he walks into a room. When they ignore or belittle him, they don't realize the pain they're inflicting. Benjamin can't teach people how to treat him. He's not a movie star or political figure with thousands of fans, but his innocence and pureness of heart is extraordinary. He can't earn respect in a flashy, heroic way, but Benjamin and others like him deserve our respect. Samuel Johnson once said, the true measure of a man is how he treats someone who can do him absolutely no good. So say hello to the vagrant instead of trying to avoid eye contact. Give the special needs student a high five in the hall. Invite the kid who sits alone every day to sit at your lunch table. You may earn some respect along the way. Thank you. I'm Leanne Zinzer, and this is my beautiful daughter, Cassidy Blue. Thank you, Mama. And this is the Laws of Life TV special on the Education Channel. We're on location at the Hilton Naples, the site of this year's Laws of Life Essay Competition Awards Banquet and we are shining the spotlight on this year's essay winners. We are, Cassidy. These are the students who best demonstrate the character traits that we all need to pay attention to so that we will do well in school and in life. That's right, Mama. So why don't we go back inside to see who the ninth and 10th grade Laws of Life winners are and to hear the first place speech. In the book, The Essential Worldwide Laws of Life by Sir John Templeton, one is asked to decide what their life's purpose is, and what law of life will help them get there. We're all told to work hard, get good grades, and get a good job so that we can and get into a good college so that we can get a good job. But is that it? Is that my life's purpose? There must be more. This book made me take a deeper look at myself and try and decide what will bring me happiness. I really love to talk to people. So maybe my happiness could be found by going into business or politics. I'm also really interested in health and nutrition. So maybe a career as a dietitian or a physician is in my future. I also really love little kids. So Maybe I should be a teacher or have a big family. You know what I realized? I have no idea what my life's purpose is. <laughs> and I wasn't able to figure it out in time for this speech. I do know, however, how I'm going to get there. With honor. Honor is the law of life that will guide me on the path that I need to go. A man of honor. What does that mean to you? To me, it means to live one's life with honesty, integrity, and pride. How do I know this, you ask? Because I've been watching. I've been watching my parents, my teachers, my coaches, our politicians. I've been learning about honor from your examples. Now, when you hear the name George Washington, you probably think of a great man, a man of honor. But was George Washington perfect? 
didn't he ever do anything wrong? What about that famous cherry tree he chopped down as a kid? Even as a young boy, George Washington was a man of honor and said, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down your cherry tree. Rather than punishing young George, George's father said that his honesty was worth more than 1,000 cherry trees. Now, when you hear the names Clinton, Nixon, or Armstrong, what do you think of? Like Washington, they were all in positions that took a lot of hard work to get there. But rather than thinking about their accomplishments, I first think about their famous lies. Sure, Clinton may have been a good president, but the first thing I think of is Monica. Lance Armstrong won the Tour de France, but the first thing I think of is how he cheated by taking performance-enhancing drugs. Heck, the first thing that anyone thinks of with Nixon is the Watergate scandal. What I've learned from these three men is that if you're not going to accomplish your life's purpose with honesty and integrity, well, then don't bother accomplishing your life's purpose at all. Recently, there was an event at home that taught me a lot about honor. It wasn't from a parent, and it wasn't from a teacher. It wasn't even from an adult. It was from my little brother. Recently, a bunch of kids in my little brother's class got in trouble for cheating on a social studies test. A student got his hands on an answer key and circulated it around the class. My parents got a call home from school to tell them that my little brother was the only student who didn't cheat on the test. My parents were, of course, very happy to hear about this, but were a little curious as to what was behind my brother's honorable behavior. When we asked my little brother why he didn't cheat, he replied, well, because I really like my teacher, and I want him to know that I can do well on his test without cheating. My little brother didn't earn a 100%. He does know, however, that he earned his grade with honesty, integrity, and pride. When you see me in 20 years as a physician, a musician, a teacher, or even the President of the United States, I want you to know that I got there by doing the right thing. Only when I can say that I lived my life with honor will I be able to say that it was a life well lived. Thank you. This is the Laws of Life TV special on the Education Channel, Comcast Cable 99. So I guess it's finally time for the big kids. That's right, the 11th and 12th grade finalists and we'll go inside for the first place winner's speech. Life exists through stories. I have a story to tell, and I know that people and circumstances alone do not define the life that I live. Through the harshest adversities and the simplest pleasures, my life is defined by the choices I make and by the kindness, courage, and perseverance with which I navigate this complex and magnificent world. I was born in the rural sector of China's Hubei province, and lacking records of my birth parents, I was taken in by an underfunded orphanage in Wuhan. I was named Huang Cheng for the street corner they found me on, and I faced malnourishment by the time of my adoption 11 months later. My adoptive mother flew across the world to receive me at the orphanage, and then I celebrated my first birthday here in Naples, Florida, under a new name. When I was three, mom was diagnosed with stage four small cell lung cancer. I remember seeing her hair all falling out on her pillow and wondering to myself why she had gotten a haircut in the middle of the night without cleaning up afterwards because she was always so tidy and in control. She sat me down and she told me that she wanted to see me grow into a beautiful young woman. And with chemotherapy and radiation, Mom fought her way to remission. When I was nine, the FBI raided my home. Mom's husband was arrested and incarcerated on federal charges. 
mom who had endured him to avoid shuffling me between two homes, was finally able to get a divorce in full custody of me, and I never saw her ex-husband again. In October 2012, when I was 15, mom was diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer, stage four, metastatic to her brain, bones, and adrenal glands. I became her caretaker. I drove her to appointments, I administered medications, I picked her up when she fell, helped her with personal hygiene and trips to the bathroom. As homemaker, I cooked, cleaned, grocery shopped, paid bills, and balanced checkbooks. And with mom's insistence, I maintained my grades and my varsity sports with a smile. I'm thankful for every day I spent with her, just laughing and talking, anything that would make her feel happy again. In December 2012, mom had a stroke, and I drove her to the ER. By August 2013, nearly a year since her diagnosis, mom had deteriorated, suffering a respiratory shutdown. We spent the next year in the hospital together. We, uh, excuse me, we spent the next week in the hospital together until she was discharged to a facility for outpatient rehabilitation, which we couldn't afford for long due to dwindling bank accounts and relentless expenses. Mom had known what was happening for a while. I saw it in her brave eyes. She returned home to hospice care. On September 18th, 2013, at 5.25 in the evening, I held mom's hand as she passed away. She lived with cancer for nearly my entire life, fighting valiantly to see me grow up and making my first 16 years golden with her love and her insistence never to quit. In the following months, it was necessary to sell the home that I had lived in since my adoption from China. I've since been appointed a legal guardian and being twice orphaned, I'm very thankful to have a place to live. In March 2014, I applied to the Jean Doyle Adventure Scholarship. Its virtues, which so embody mom and our relationship, embrace a love of life and nature, the pure joy of laughing and learning, an honest smile, a warm laugh, and a zest for daily living. In July, from the aid of the scholarship, I traveled to Alaska the destination that mom was never quite able to knock off of her bucket list. Raw, uncompromising, and humbling, Alaska was my tribute to mom and a chance for me to make peace with my past. The wilderness provides a certain solace that cannot be replicated by sympathy cards or fox bouquets. Now I am ready for the next great milestones in my life. Mom, with peace in her heart, knew this when she embarked on her next adventure. She taught me that life is not so much about conquering as it is about fighting well. Her job is done. Now it's my turn, and I will fight well so that my life story continues to demonstrate the kindness, courage, and perseverance that embody all I have learned and all I wish to learn. I will live well and love living for I know that challenges are only more of life's glorious adventures. Thank you. So Cassidy, what do you think? That was a really impressive group of students. I sure thought so. And once again, we want to congratulate all the winners. Way to go. For the Education Channel, I'm Leanne Zinzer. And I'm Cassidy Bloom. We'll see you next time. Bye. The Laws of Life television special was produced by the Collier County Public Schools Communications and Community Engagement Department for the Education Channel, Comcast Cable 99, your window to education.